Born in the ashes of World War II and inspired by Lord Byron's account of Napoleon's defeat at Waterloo, the United Nations founders borrowed a phrase. Here, where the sword United Nations drew, our countrymen were warring on that day, and this much, and all, which will not pass away. But 75 years after the United Nations was forged, its mission of international security is indeed in danger of what Franklin Delano Roosevelt and Winston Churchill surely considered unthinkable, passing away. We are as divided now as any time in generations with multinational institutions like the UN devalued. Coronavirus has shown us just how far removed our world has gotten from the ideals that once stitched member nations together. That trend has been long in the making. It's what I've been talking about for years and why my show is called G Zero World, because there's such an absence of global leadership. But that doesn't mean there's no longer a need for global problem solving, even if it happens over Zoom. Human rights, climate change, AI, drugs, terrorism, the rise of China, growing nationalism in Europe and the United States, war, refugees, and of course, the pandemic. These are the issues being discussed at this year's UN General Assembly. For the first time, world leaders have not gathered in person. 193 heads of state and governments have instead gone virtual. And it's going to be hard to compete with the theatrics of the past. In 1960, Fidel Castro broke the mold and his time allotment, four and a half hours. That was his denouncement of the United States. That same year, Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev brandished his shoe to protest criticism of Soviet meddling in Eastern Europe. 1974, Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat came bearing an olive branch and a freedom fighter's gun, as he put it, much to Israeli displeasure. 2004, Hugo Chavez called his US counterpart the devil, saying he could still smell the sulfur. Five years later, Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi literally ripped a page from the United Nations Charter. Who could forget that? And finally, in 2018, laughter filled the chamber when President Trump claimed his administration had already accomplished more than almost any other. So true. <laughs> Didn't expect that reaction, but that's okay. This is the Super Bowl of diplomacy. It's a contact sport. And pressing the flesh does matter. President Obama did so with President Raul Castro on the assembly sidelines ahead of U.S. normalization with Cuba. A few years later, President Trump even hinted at a possible meeting with Iranian President Hassan Rouhani in the same place. Backroom face-to-face -face meetings are often where the real groundwork for diplomacy is laid. But now, with social distancing the norm and virtual meetings the replacement, it's pretty hard to get a lot done.